Hi there. Um, thought we'd do a, a video to show you all the new enhancements in the ver new version of 4Pos. Uh, we are now sitting on version 19.7.1. In the back office, we've taken the new stock item button or option away and we've merged it with the main stock. Um, let me show you that one quickly. Let's highlight them as we go, then we can make sure we do it properly. All right, so under main stock or stock create edit, uh, stock create edit, you'll see we do not have a new stock item anymore. Uh, we have an option that says a main stock by detail only, and we added the new stock item right here. Now the same rules apply that if you've got a preloaded database, uh, it will bring up the preloaded database. Otherwise, it will just jump straight into for you to be able to edit the item. Uh, let's just do item number test four. Uh, or no, let's rather call it uh, four pass two for now. So uh, yeah, I wanted to get to the top of the list so I can show you quickly how to use it. Argument's sake, my cost is whatever. And I'm clicking next. Uh, barcode's fine, and the price is argument's sake one double nine double zero. Oh, sorry, one triple nine double zero. Um, all right, and that's the only product I want to add. So I click on exit, and you'll see that my four pass two item that I just created in the list. I think it will make it a lot easier for people to understand how to add an item and not to have the confusion about new stock and a main stock and so on. So as soon as you click on exit, yeah, it says do you wish to run the update point of sale. I'm going to say yes, and the system will pop up and say, well, there are some items here that is. Um, uh, you know, under cost, um, the same rule applies. So that if it isn't, or you've disabled the, the option, uh, which I'll show you now, um, you can actually go and have a look. And as you can see uh, that on these items, the reason it's warning me, it's telling me on point of sale sales channel, which is something, which is my main sales channel, obviously very important. If it's cost or something like that, we can just ignore it. Um, but on 300 gram rump, Argument's sake, my cost is 413, but I'm selling for 125. I'm going to run a negative profit of 231%. So in other words, the more I sell, the more I lose. Obviously, I don't want to do that. I need to go back and go and check what the problem is there. And the same applies to the others. So for now, I'm just going to say continue. And you see the update will complete. If you do not want to see that warning in the future, you're welcome to go to general parameters. And we've got an option down here that says do not view update warning. Uh, again, be careful. Uh, make sure that you update your prices properly. It uh, doesn't help to go and, like a certain retailer said this week, that this certain shirt wasn't supposed to be on the shelf for 75 Rand. It's actually a 500 Rand item or whatever the case may be. Uh, it can be quite expensive. All right, so again, if I've taken the option out and I say update all, I won't get the option to update anymore, or sorry, to view the changes anymore. So that makes it a lot simpler. Um, as you saw now, obviously the old update option is still available there. So if you don't want to use it straight from there, or maybe want to update it because you change promotions or whatever else you can. All right. Uh, next option, all reports rearranged into sales, etc. Let's have a look under reporting here. Uh, excuse the date on my demo here. It's uh, 2018. I haven't done a day end on this demo database for some time. We've got dashboard, all the financial reports together, all my sales performances, all of them together. And so on, I think it makes it a lot easier to try and find the right report that you need. Um, suppliers, all the different supplier reports, all your stock control uh, reports together. Uh, later in the uh, option, you'll see that we've also fixed up the utilities, all the exports, all the imports together, initializers and zeros, and the other utilities all together. It makes it a lot simpler. Uh, I think personally a, a major advancement. All right, so all the dashboard, uh, dashboard, sorry, uh, sales dashboard improved. So let's uh, have a look at that quickly. So under reporting, sales dashboard, um, a lot of the information is still correct, but we've added quite a lot here at the bottom. You'll see my customer supply aging totals. In other words, my supplier values uh, down here. What do I owe my suppliers? Obviously, I want to make sure that they're all paid. So they keep on supplying me religiously and I don't take chances. And tomorrow I sit with our product and then I've got a major problem. We've also included the, the VAT summary over here, VAT on taxable sales, VAT on taxable purchases and the VAT due. Now, bear in mind, again, this is for a specific period. So don't go and pay that VAT and blame us for it. OK, you must go and print it for those two months or the three months or whatever your or monthly, if that is your agreement with uh, Mr. Taxman. Um, and this is just a demo. 
All right. Uh, a couple of other things that we've added in the sales channels here. We've also uh, we always had uh, the value of the sales per channel. So there's 11,000 rands worth of sales. It also gives us the number of transactions. In other words, the number of customers that we served. Uh, we had 38 customers. The average per customer is 295. Again, in my case, uh, that's reasonable. Many of our retailers' average sale would be around about 40 rand, 50 rand, 25 rand even. So the trick would be to say, well, how do we increase that? How do we increase the basket value of what we're selling to our customer? The customers are coming in. Um, in my case, now very low number, only 38 or 54 in total. Um, but many of our customers will, will deal with 8 and 10 and 12, 15,000 transactions or customers per, per month. And so we want to try and capitalize on that number of people that come into your store they there, you need to start selling to them. You need to increase your basket value. You need to cre increase your averages down here. Uh, we've also added up and, and fixed a couple of other things. Uh, the stock transfer cost now is content and deposit. So that's for those bottles that's a quart of beer that's in the fridge. There's the liquid inside, which is the content, and the deposit is the bottle, which is packed in. So it gives us a better cost value now of what those uh, items are worth to us in other words what's the value of the stock that we've got on the shelf um, and then also we in included and fixed up the content cost up here and also deposit cost sold okay remember all of these are excluding VAT so if you are registered for VAT uh, you need to take that in consideration okay next item on the list uh, many reports updated we've done GRVs now allows payment after processing let's go and do that quickly so we do order processing, process a GRV. This is obviously your invoices from your suppliers. Uh, let's just grab this one. Low GRV. Yes, never mind. I'm ignoring that. Those are the items that I'm buying. Going next. No returns. Next. My final screen shows me the figures quite nicely. I'm processing the invoice. In other words, it's updating the stock. Uh, some items are... Uh, less than an order quantity. No, I don't want to create a back order. System shows me the report, which I can print to PDF or print to file, uh, sorry, print to printer for filing purposes. And more importantly, then ask me if you wish to process payment. So if I've paid the supply immediately here, the value of the invoice will come up. And if there was a settlement, you can enter it in. If not, then you can simply process. Just bear in mind that if you've got a settlement, the amount paid must then be less than the amount. So in other words, let's say I get, I've got a two rand settlement. I'll make this 43.24. Uh, my settlement is two rand, and that might be your agreement uh, with your supplier that if you pay COD, then that, and the total amount is that. Bear in mind that the system will not warn you. If you want to put in 10 million in there, it will allow you to do put 10 million. Uh, and then it will obviously be wrong and so on. So if we process that very clearly, it will show me the payment and the settlement that has gone through on the system. All done and all good. Much better. So my suppliers uh, will be more updated. Day and reports now expanded. Uh, we added uh, deposits into the day and reports. Um, just quickly want to show you. So I go into my day and report for argument's sake that day. And there was deposits that will automatically print the deposits for me at the bottom here if it's been selected uh, or not. Okay, or and if there was deposits. Uh, for those that sell airtime, obviously look at the day end. You'll see what your value of your airtime uh, is on the system. And make sure that you've got enough money deposited uh, for the next day. All right, so day end, I'll be able to email. Uh, let's go and do that quickly. All right, so under store setup again, general parameters. We, the system will automatically on a day end now email the day end report to this email address. You could also go and set it up for other uh, directors that you might have. Day end email, configure email for day end report. I can click here and then go into configure. Yes, I want to add it in and I can go and put in whatever other emails I want to put in. Obviously, if it's a valid email, invalid email, I mean, uh, it will just bounce back and will be cancelled. So and no benefit in that. So rather do it properly okay uh, next item um, the uh, sorry need to go back there one step sorry uh, it will automatically be sent email be sent to this one this is for additional emails that you want to send so in other words let's say Mike uh, 
owner's email or the business email is test at test.co.za but I also want to send to an investor ABC or John or whoever and that's what I will configure if you put the same test email in here you will get two emails okay and then think that the software is not working it is actually just you told it to send to okay so let's go back um, all right, so disabled stock item does not show. Yes, it's just a simple option that if an item is disabled, it used to not show, um, sorry, it used to show on the stock adjustments as well as on the stock value reports. It does not do that anymore. If the item is disabled and doesn't have stock, it will not show. You'll have to go back and enable the item again to get it back to show on your stock tech uh, adjustments utilities we shown has been rearranged past or replaced with 4 tfm a uh, simple little thing we just don't want to advertise the other people anymore the other companies anymore so we now uh, want to advertise 4 tfm which is our new system uh, financial system that we will uh, release shortly and i say shortly most likely during the course of july 2019 and we'll uh, let you know on all the channels, emails, etc., etc., uh, that it's available, how to install it, how to use it, and obviously make manuals and videos that goes along with it. Okay, so let's move on. Four pass scan, fully touch enabled. Uh, here's my four pass touch. Uh, in four pass touch, you need to go into option 21, enable touch buttons uh, to make it available. And you see on the bottom right hand side here it says on screen keyboard. Then um, while I'm on the configuration screen, also option 19, enable email to data account. So when you do an, a, a, an account invoice, it automatically be emailed to your um, customer. And then while we add it, option 20, enable highlight uh, re reprinted receipt. So if you are reprinting a, an invoice, it will clearly print on there in highlight, uh, in other words, bigger, bolder, uh, that it's a reprint so that you do not... Uh, possibly create a security risk at the door uh, when people just take reprinted slips and products out there. In other words, my cashier just reprints and a slip, uh, gives it to a customer, customer fetches the items from the shelf um, and walks out with it and, uh, and then the security guy doesn't know how to handle it. Um, all right, we also full, full touch screen enabled. In other words, if I go to search now, I can go and look for rump or whatever the case may be, select the item, press enter, uh, F10 for tender, obviously, uh, it's 135, so let's say a customer gave me 150, and uh, it's F2 for cash, do you want to receive yes or no? So full touch enabled, please play around if there's anything that we missed or something like that, let us know, you'll see that the menus are also highlighted top right hand side, top left hand side, so, so the menu uh, comes up now on all the X reading. All of these items are now uh, touch enabled as well. Uh, if you're still using the keyboard, and you suddenly say, "But I didn't know that these menus exist." They Alt F12 and Shift F11 to get into them. Uh, it's always been there. You can reprint the keyboard layouts from your manual, and you'll see that those options are have, have quite a, a lot of significant uh, functions. Okay, so for postcards, fully touch enabled. We looked at that. Automatic emails we've done, reprinted invoices we've done, and the last item, if it's print, if it's an item on promotion, on promotions, obviously it will then print P next to the item to show the customer that there's a promotion item at a promotion price. Bear that in mind for returns or refunds in the future. Um, in other words, the customer now brings it back three days after the promotion be careful that you don't just go and do a refund on that because it will be back to the normal price refund at the same price that the promotion was on and not on the current price okay important that you pick that up um, uh, you might lose money all right um, all right and for post touch uh, bug fixed on auto create by department it was just the irritation uh, it's sorted out now. Bug fixed. I'm trying to go offline on the server PC. On the server PC, obviously, if you're running standalone, uh, four bars on the touchscreen uh, environment, pub, restaurant, pub, uh, sorry, bar, spas or shop, that type of businesses, um, it sometimes would, the Windows registry would have a problem and it will come up and say, do you wish to run offline, which you can't do on the server. So that's been fixed. 
Um, that's a, a quick uh, rundown on it. Oh, sorry, one last thing I was thinking of. I just want to show you the promotions. It's also been enhanced and bettered. Um, if I go to other maintenance here promotions, a lot of customers don't use the promotions options, but it's a really powerful a tool to promote items to your customer get more customers in let them spend a little bit more and as you can see we've added promotion percentages and GP percentages in there so coke can normal price 15 Rand as you can see over there promo price 999 so normally I make 91% obviously my cost is wrong and on the pro promo I'll do 86% uh, big help so you can see it directly while you're creating the promo what your margins are going to be like and that you're not going to lose out on the deal uh, please watch the, and read the manual about how to set up promotions. Uh, important uh, for many, many reasons. All right, that's it. Enjoy the new version.